A very good morning students. Today we will be learning about urban settlements. Urban settlement is a large compact or the nucleated settlement in which most of the workforce is engaged in the secondary or the industries and the tertiary or the services sectors. There is no uniform criteria to define an urban place. It differs from country to country and from one state to another. Thus, to some extent, there is some degree of arbitrariness in the definition of urban and rural places. The urban places are, however, generally defined on the basis of population size, population density, occupations of inhabitants and the types of local government. Objectives. In today's class, we will learn about definition of urban place, urban growth and development in India, morphology of the Indian cities, functional classification of Indian cities. Now firstly, let's look at the definition of urban places. The census of India until 1951 defined an urban settlement as all places with municipality, corporation, cantonment board and notified areas. All other places which satisfy the following conditions which are a minimum population of 5000, at least 75% of the male working population engaged in non-agricultural activities and a density of population of at least 400 persons per square kilometer. In the census of 1981, some more changes were incorporated whereby livestock, forestry, fishing, hunting, plantation and orchard settlements were treated as agricultural activities. Places having distinct urban characteristics and civic amenities like industrial area, railway colonies, place of tourist interest, health resorts and project sites were regarded as urban places at the discretion of the Director General of Census Operation in consultation with the concerned state government. The census definition also laid emphasis on urban characteristics, social amenities like water, electricity, schools, post offices and hospitals etc. But there was no specific list available of these amenities and everything was left to the discretion of the census authorities. The density of population of 400 persons per square kilometer is unrealistically low in the Indian context and states like Bihar, Haryana, Kerala, Maharashtra, UP and West Bengal had urban densities well over 1000 persons per square kilometer. A much higher value around 1000 persons per square kilometer would be more appropriate in the Indian scenario. The Census Department of the Government of India has classified the urban places under six categories. Population of 1 lakh and above is treated as class 1, population of 50,000 to 99,999 class 2, population of 20,000 to 49,999 class 3, population of 10,000 to 19,999 class 4, population of 5,000 to 9999 class 5, population less than 5,000 as class 6. Apart from the Census Department of the Government of India, geographers have classified urban places into urban village. In an urban village, most of the working population is engaged in non-agricultural activities. The land use is however dominated by the agriculture and allied economic activities. Town, a general name for an urban place, usually a settlement with a population of less than 1 lakh. The size of towns differs from country to country and no specific size range is generally accepted to distinguish a town from the city. City A city is a full-fledged urban agglomeration showing the predominance of secondary and tertiary occupations and complex internal structure. In India, any town with a population of 1 lakh or more is termed as a city. Metropolitan or a metro city It is a region of densely populated urban core and its less populated surrounding territories sharing industry, infrastructure and housing. They form the economic and political regions. Next, the megalopolis. A Greek word combining the terms for great and city adapted by John Gottman in 1964 to describe the urban complex of northeastern board of the United States of America. Conurbation, 
a term coined by Patrick Geddes to describe a built up area created by the coalescence of one separate urban settlement through ribbon development along the main interurban routes. Cosmopolis, it is a large area inhabited by people from many different countries. In India, conurbations are found around Delhi, Kolkata and Mumbai. In all these mega cities, two or more than two million cities have merged in such a way that an ordinary person cannot differentiate the territorial jurisdiction of either of them. Now let's look at the urban growth and development in India. Development of urban places is quite old in India. India is a country in which urban centers and urbanization flourished as early as 3000 BC. The urban centers of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa may be cited as examples of prehistoric urbanization in India. During the ancient period, the cities of Harappan civilization flourished for about 600 years between 2350 BC and 1750 BC. Important towns of Harappan culture are Kalibangan, Lothal, Rangpur, Rajadi, Banwali and Rupar. During the periods of Aryans, the major cities developed include Ayodhya, Kapilavastu, Khushinagar, Patliputra, Rajagriha, Varanasi, Vaishali, etc. During the medieval period, the Turks and the Mughals developed the cities of Agra, Ahmedabad, Ahmadnagar, Aurangabad, Bijapur, Bikanir, Hyderabad, Jaipur, Jodhpur, Kota, Moradabad, Mysore, Pune, Raipur, Sarjahanpur. They also established many cantonments at strategic points. Under the planned economy of government of India after independence, many new industrial, capital and planned cities were developed. The growth of urban places in India may be examined through the historical phases. Ancient cities. Most of the cities of the ancient period were the capitals of Hindu kings. The center of city used to be occupied by the royal palace. Near the palace were the cultural places like temples, ranking Brahmins and the houses of the ministers of the royal cabinet. The Shudras or the untouchables were given the southern side during the period of Maurya Empire. Hastinapur, Kanchipuram, Kapilavastu, Madhurai, Mathura, Patliputra, Rajagriha, Vaishali, Varanasi, Ujjain and Urayur are some of the important towns and cities of the ancient period. Medieval cities During the medieval period of Indian history, the Muslim imprint on the city structure is significantly conspicuous. The Muslim introduced fortifications, mosques, bazaar and chalk and residential segregation in their cities. The walled city of Shah Jahanabad or Old Delhi is a typical example of the medieval town. The city of Shah Jahanabad was built on the bank of river Yamuna. Are some of the important cities developed by the Muslim rulers during the medieval period. All the cities had gates for regular entries. Now let's look at some of the gates. The Kashmiri Gate built in 1835 by British Major Robert Smith. It lies towards the northern end of the city near ISBT in Delhi. The emperors used the gate as an exit for visits to the northern India. Delhi Gate is also known as Dilli Darwaza and lies towards southeastern end of the city near Darya Ganj. It was built in 1638 by Emperor Shah Jahan. It was used by him to visit the Jamma Masjid for his prayers. Ajmeri Gate. This gate lies to the southwestern end of the city and is presently located near New Delhi Railway Station. It was built in 1644 and has witnessed the first battle for independence of India in 1857. Next we have the Turkman Gate. The gate lies on the southern end of the medieval city of Shah Jahanabad. It was constructed in 1650. It was named to honor a holy saint Hazrat Shah Turkman Bayabani. Now let's look at the gates of Red Fort. Delhi Gate was the main entry point of Mughal army. These gates were secured to the Prime Minister to hoist the national flag on the Independence Day. Nigam Bodh Gate. It lies on the eastern end of the city and is situated near the Yamuna Market. The gate was named after the burial ground near the Ghats. Khuni Darwaza. 
It is of historical significance. It witnessed the bloodshed during the 1857 Sepoy Mutiny. It is located on the Bahadur Shah Zafar Road and lies opposite to Feroz Shah Kotla. Bahadur Shah Gate, it was constructed between 1854 and 1855 by Emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar. It was an entry point from the northern end of Shalimar Fort. Cities of British period. The British modified the traditional cities of India of the ancient and medieval period. The development of railway lines and increasing trade and commercialization resulted in the development of new patterns of urban settlements. Some of the important cities developed by the Britons were Coimbatore, Dehradun, Dalhousie, Darjeeling, Gulmarg, Jamshedpur, Kanpur, Kharagpur, Kullu, Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, Manali, Marmagao, Masuri, Nainital, Panaji, Ranikhet, Shimla and Shillong. Commercialization added new modes in city in the form of central business districts like Connaught Place in Delhi, mall roads with green belts on both sides, clubs for recreation, churches and well-maintained gardens, parks and graveyards were added in the urban places by the Britons. Now let's look at the cities which are developed after independence. A number of cities and towns were developed by the national and the state governments after independence. These were well-planned cities which have been provided adequate social amenities. The cities of Bhilai, Bhubaneswar, Bokaro, Chandigarh, Dispur, Faridabad, Noida, Gandhinagar, Gurgaon, Lavasa, Panchkula, Patnagar and Rorkela are some of the important cities developed during the post-independence period. Period of slow urban growth, the period from 1881 to 1931 may be termed as the period of slow urban growth. The frequent occurrence of natural calamities like droughts, floods, famines, epidemics and high mortality rate during the 50 years period that is from 1881 to 1931, the urban population grew at an average annual growth rate of less than 1%. Next we have the period of medium growth rate. The period between 1931 and 1961 was the period of medium urban growth. The urban population of India grew at a relatively faster pace. For example, in 1931, the total urban population of India was 33.45 million, which increased to 78.93 by 1961. During the planned period after independence, a number of new industrial and urban centers were established. Next, we have the period of rapid urban growth. This is between 1961 and 2011. It was only 18.3% of the total population of which of the country which grew to 31.16% in 2011. At present, the country is passing through a phase of rapid urban growth as the rural population is migrating towards the big urban areas in search of employment and better opportunities in life. Now let's look at the morphology of Indian cities. Morphology of the urban settlement means urban land use. Urban morphology comprises the structure of city, open areas, industrial estates, business districts, downtown, residential areas, cultural centers, roads, playgrounds, water bodies, parks, orchards, social forestry areas and the green belt. Has identified some of the components of urban morphology as site characteristics historical background, skyline, green open space, water bodies, residential and cultural areas. Morphology of towns in India has distinct phases like ancient, medieval, modern and recent including sprawls with rapid increase in population after independence. For a systematic study of urban morphology of Indian cities, a historical perspective is most appropriate. Ancient urban morphology. Most of the urban settlements in the Indus Valley had a typical morphology known as grid iron of main streets running north and south and east and west dividing the town roughly into blocks of almost equal size. The rectangular plan of the urban morphology was designed to confirm with the needs of some sort of ceremony, religious or secular or both in which the terrace or the terraces play a dominant role and to which processional access was required. The cities like Ayodhya, Kanchipuram, Lumbini, Madurai, Mathura, Rajagriha, 
Varanasi, Vaishali and Ujjain represent such morphology of the Indian cities. Now let's look at the morphology of the medieval towns. The medieval towns adopted the grid pattern of ancient towns and added the forts, city walls, bazaars or markets, mosques, chalks, tanks or water bodies. The modern development and changed pattern of urban morphology. The rapid industrialization and urbanization of second half of the 20th century has changed substantially the morphology of Indian cities. The process of migration from rural to urban areas has made the old cities more crowded and rich people from the old cities constructed their houses in their peripheries. Most of the Indian cities, even after about six decades of planning, display a duality in their morphology. They consist of numerous foci of activity flanked by irregular streets, nearly from all sides by narrow, tortuous and at places blind curves and lanes. The indigenous city unit is deeply influenced by phenomena of caste and community and living quarters in separate localities or residential areas. The central parts are mostly occupied by higher castes and business communities, while the lower and poorer people are largely confined to the outskirts. One of the peculiar features of the cities developed by the British was the central business district. The CBD is the heart of an urban area, usually located at the meeting point of the city's transport systems, which contain the highest percentage of shops and offices, land values in CBD are high because of high accessibility. Therefore, land use is at its most intense in order to offset rent cost. In consequence, in many countries, development is upward rather than sideward. Within the CBD, specialist areas such as jewelry or garment making quarter may arise in order to benefit from the external economies. Vertical land use zoning is also common so that retail outlets may be on the ground floor with commercial users above them and residential users higher up. Connaught Place, one of the important CBDs of Delhi, has been shown in the figure. The alien pattern has developed into the civil lines, the cantonment, educational institutions, hospitals and the railway colonies. Here, the areas are monotonously planned in European style with bungalows, barracks and residential quarters along straight broad roads. The civil lines of Allahabad situated to the east of new cantonment was established on an extensive grid plan cut through by the main route which was related to the axis of old Mughal city of Allahabad. Within the area were all the standard representatives of English culture in India. The government offices, the law courts, the hotels, the university, the educational institutions, the hospitals, churches and the Allahabad club. Now let's look at the functional classification of Indian cities. Functions in geography means economic activities in which the working population is mainly engaged. A categorization of cities according to the functions is known as functional classification of towns. The urban functions are mainly non-agricultural like administration, manufacturing, trade, commerce, defense, provision of goods and services, communication and recreation. In reality, none of the cities is monofunctional. In other words, any one city may fulfill a number of functions. The functional classification of cities attempts to categorize towns and cities according to their economic functions, thereby identifying their role within the urban systems. The urban geographers have applied a number of techniques to classify the urban places on the basis of their functions. Most of the classifications, however, utilize the occupational data. Administrative cities the main function of the administrative cities or towns is to administer the country, state or any other administrative unit. It includes not only the capital cities of the country, but also all the centers of the states, districts and other administrative divisional headquarters of the country. Administrative cities also have the legislative, executive and judiciary of the respective administrative unit. New Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Lucknow, Jaipur, Patna, Gandhinagar, Bhopal, Chandigarh, Shillong, Dispur, Aswal, etc. 
are essentially administrative cities, defense towns. The dawn that functions in the defense town pertain to security and defense of the country. In fact, such towns are characterized with cantonments, barracks, military training centers, garrisons, air force bases, airfields, harbors, strategic locations, and naval headquarters. Cultural cities. These cities perform either religious, educational, or recreational functions. The cities of Allahabad, Amritsar, Ajmer, Bodhgaya, Dharmshala, Gangotri, Haradwar, Khushipur, Nashik, Piran Kalyar in Uttarakhand, Pushkar, Varanasi, etc., are the religious centers in which the religious rituals are performed, and the markets are full of religious books and accessories required for re religious rituals. Collection centers. The mining towns, fishing ports, lumbering centers are included in this category. The urban places of Zawar near Udaipur, Digboy in Assam, Ankaleshwar in Gujarat, Baladela in Chhattisgarh, Kottagudam, Haldwani and Kotawar in Uttarakhand, Machlipatnam, Kakinada, Navsari, Mahe, Kozikode, Kudalur, etc. are some of the examples of collection centers. Production centers. The urban places which have manufacturing industries are included in the category of manufacturing cities or the production centers. Bhilai, Bhadravati, Bokaro, Coimbatore, Dhanbad, Durgapur, Jamshedpur, Vijayanagaram, Vishakhapatnam, etc. are some of the important manufacturing centers of India. Transfer and distribution centers. The main functions performed at the transfer centers are trade, commerce and service. These categories include several categories of towns. The most important commercial centers are Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Ahmedabad, Gwalior, Indore, Ludhiana, Muzaffarpur, Pagwara, Surat, etc. Resorts. The urban places which cater the recreation needs of people are known as the resorts of the recreation towns. These towns may be based on health giving water, hot springs, seaside recreation, mountain climbing, sport facilities, national parks, tiger reserves and places of aesthetic beauty. Bageshwar, Dehradun, Dalhousie, Darjeeling, Dharamshala, Gulmark, Kullu Manali, Mount Abu, Nainital, Palamgarh, Panchmadi, Uti, Rani Khet, etc. are some of the examples of the resort towns. Residential towns. Some of the towns and cities are developed just to provide residential accommodation to the urban people. In Delhi, Rohini, Indrapuram, Saraswati Vihar, Zikri Nagar, etc. are some of the examples of residential towns. Seaports. The basic task of seaports is to export and import goods. Diamond Harbour, Haldia, Kandla, Kochi, New Mangalore, New Tuttikodi, Okhla, Paradweep, etc. may be included in this category. Cities with diversified functions, as stated, most of the cities and towns of India are multifunctional. The capital cities are also the commercial, manufacturing, cultural and recreational centres. The seaports are engaged in trade and commerce beside cultural activities. Cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Patna, Guwahati, Vishakhapatnam, Jaipur, Kanpur, Allahabad and Varanasi are performing highly assorted functions. Many of the cities have changed their sites in the past. For example, Delhi has shifted its site at Indraprastha, Surajkund, Mehroli, Sirifort, Kilokri, Firosha Kotla, Tughlaqabad, Shah Jahanabad and New Delhi. Some of the important cities of the past have disappeared as they lost their strategic, administrative, manufacturing or commercial prominence. Urban settlements are the settlements in which most people are engaged in secondary, tertiary and quaternary activities. In other words, urban relates to cities and towns. Size, density and occupations are the criteria frequently used in census and other definitions of urban places, though the particular division between urban and rural is arbitrary.